Hello, I am Dr. Ariel Sloan, an Addiction Psychiatry Fellow at the Yale School of Medicine. In this lesson, you will learn about implicit bias, how it impacts your treatment of patients, and ways to counteract bias for more equitable outcomes. Let's start with a case. Imagine you are meeting a patient for a follow-up appointment in your clinic. Patient X is a 35-year-old construction worker with a history of using heroin, now taking medication for opiate use disorder that they received from your clinic. Your patient has been doing very well and has not used heroin in over a year. However, patient X's most recent urine drug screen was positive for cocaine, which you plan to address at their appointment. Let's pause here. How are you picturing this patient? Do you see someone that is male or female, or of a certain race, sexuality, or ideology? Even though I didn't mention any demographic information in the case, you have likely associated certain groups with the details in the clinical scenario. These automatic associations are implicit bias at play. Implicit bias is when we have attitudes towards people or associate stereotypes with them without our conscious knowledge of it happening. These thought patterns are often outside our own awareness and they impact our clinical interactions and treatment plans. Let's return to the clinical vignette. Would you consider changing this patient's treatment to a more restrictive setting based on this positive urine drug screen if the patient were black? Would your recommendation be different if they were white? You probably assume your treatment recommendation would be the same. But keep in mind, there is significant evidence that healthcare providers hold negative stereotypes about patients based on race, sex, and other characteristics. And these stereotypes influence how we interpret patient behavior and how we make treatment decisions. In one study, Dr. Todd and his colleagues reported that black people presenting to a U.S. emergency room with broken arms or legs were significantly less likely to receive opiate pain medications than were white people. The difference was 57 versus 74 percent, despite the groups having similar self-reports of pain. Why would there be a significant difference in outcomes based on race? What could explain this? Well, sadly, there is a widely held stereotype in healthcare that black people feel less pain than white people. In two separate studies, Dr. Hoffman and her colleagues observed that white people, including white people with medical training, hold several false beliefs around biological differences between whites and blacks, such as black people age more slowly than whites, or black people's blood clots more quickly than whites, and black people's nerve endings are less sensitive to pain than whites. Acting on these false beliefs, healthcare providers may conclude that back patients in emergency rooms are exaggerating their complaints of pain to receive controlled substances from the healthcare team. Implicit bias is another way that healthcare providers stigmatize patients with substance use disorders and can get in the way of providing equitable care to all our patients. You might be wondering, but if I'm not even consciously aware of my biases, then what can I do about it? That's a great question. This work often takes time and effort, but by creating space for regular reflection upon your past and present clinical encounters with patients with substance use disorders, you can increase your awareness of your own implicit biases and develop greater compassion for people with substance use disorders. There are also some specific tools to get you started. For example, you can privately explore your implicit biases through self-guided online protocols, such as the implicit association test. This test measures the difference in strength of association between two groups, such as black Americans and white Americans, with an attribute like good or bad. Through Harvard University's Implicit Project, healthcare providers can explore unconscious beliefs and feelings towards a number of different groups. Learning about your own unconscious stereotypes and prejudice can decrease the likelihood that you will act in a discriminatory way. You can proactively consider a situation from the perspective of the patient and inhibit the activation of unconscious stereotypes and prejudices, leading to more empathy. Reflection and prioritizing your own self-care can also make a difference. For example, research in social cognitive psychology suggests that healthcare providers with higher levels of positive emotions during the clinical encounter may be less likely to stereotype patients. Simply being aware that the stress can increase your unconscious biases may spur us to practice greater vigilance when interacting with patients from groups from which we may hold biases. Increased awareness about how implicit bias contributes to inequities is an important first step in improving outcomes for stigmatized patients. 
While you have the ability to work on your own biases, there are much larger factors, such as federal policies, contributing to health inequities. You will learn more about systemic racism and its impact on substance use treatment in Module 6.